Um, our next speaker is uh, Human Rights Commissioner Tim Wilson, who's strongly committed to equality before the law and is focused on free speech, free association and religious freedom. The Australian newspaper recognised him as one of the ten emerging leaders of Australian society. And I think I can say without fear of contradiction that he has taken the role of hum Commissioner for Human Rights into the public arena more than any before him being incredibly active on social media as well as mainstream media. Um, Commissioner, thanks for coming and we look forward to hearing your thoughts. Well, thank you very much for that kind introduction and thank you all for coming today. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the organisers for bringing together this conference, which I've no doubt will be an incredibly important discussion about the challenges faced in the space of homelessness. But of course, I do want to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we meet uh, and pay respect to their elders past and present. As Human Rights Commissioner, my job, of course, is to look at the systemic issues of human rights that affect people across Australia. Uh, to say that people want to get different issues onto my agenda would be an understatement. One of the key areas of human rights that I'm interested in prosecuting and focusing on is the role of property rights. Property rights which are very important for the foundations of people's uh, capacity to enjoy the rewards of their effort in a free society and how that then translates into their full participation in a society. But I'm not just interested in what happens when people have them, I'm also interested in what happens when people don't have them. And that, for instance, exists without the absence of the full capacity to exercise property rights for Indigenous people on their native title lands. But in addition to that, homelessness comes very much into that focus. Uh, last year, I ran a national consultation looking at rights and responsibilities in 21st century Australia. And I haven't seen them here today, but I've no doubt they are. I went and visited the Hutt Street Centre and spoke directly to homeless people and what it meant to be denied or, or to be absent housing and how that undermined obviously their sense of security but their full participation in society to pursue their dreams, their opportunities, their lives their, and their enterprise. Building off previous work that I've done working with Melbourne City Mission and learning about their stories and particularly homeless youth who've lived on the streets. Because you would all know sitting behind human rights issues are human stories about lost potential, about people's absence of their full potential and, uh, and their capacity to engage. One of the uh, areas in which I've looked very closely at in my role is around the relationship between formal and informal equality and human rights lingo formal equality is around the basic principles of equality before the law, whereas informal equality is about equality of outcome and about generally issues of justice. But one of the things that's nakedly clear is without housing, and without the security that that provides, you cannot have other areas of injustice properly addressed. Because the absence of housing fundamentally undermines somebody's capacity to be a full participant in our society, to seek jobs, to be able to provide for their families, and be able to uh, uh, go about uh, creating better opportunities for themselves. This was well understood politically in a philosophical sense by people like John Locke. It's why Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights makes a strong reference to the importance of housing and how it's essential for people to be able to go about building their lives. Because housing doesn't just have a direct impact, obviously, in terms of protecting people on the cold. It's also about the capacity for people to build a habitual life. And as many of you will know who's engaged directly with homeless people, or in other areas where people are denied security in their tenure around their living arrangements, say for instance in detention centres, it fundamentally undermines people's capacity to be habitual in their lives, to know the benefit and the regularity that comes with getting up at a regular hour, being able to go and uh, brush your teeth, engage in basic functions as a human being, and build a routine which then enables you to go much further in different parts uh, of your life. Housing is going to be a very important focus of my work as Human Rights Commissioner next year. This year, in particular the first half, I focus strongly on issues around LGBTI Australians and equality before the law. And part of that, of course, is around issues of homelessness, particularly for young people who may be thrown out of their home 
because of their sexual orientation or gender identity and then face fundamental issues around abuse uh, and, uh, and then aren't able to go about uh, maturing in a way so that they can live a successful life. The second half of this year I focus very strongly on religious freedom and you'll see more about that throughout the second half of this year. I think it'd be fair to say that between the objectives of the first half of the year and the second half of the year, there are some tensions, but it's also an important area of tension that needs to be highlighted and discussed as a country recognising that everybody has a right to believe what they believe and to pursue their dreams. But next year, my focus is very uh, heavily going to be on the areas of housing, precisely for the reasons that I've outlined and for the reasons that you will all well understand. But what I'm looking at it is from a perspective uh, that's holistic rather than a fragmented discussion. There are fundamental issues that affect social housing, people with a disability, elderly people and the security of tenure they have over their housing over a long period of time, as well as the issues around housing affordability. Too often when I've seen discussions around housing, it has fragmented into one or different parts of that discussion, particularly around social housing when people talk about affordability issues. Coming from a uh, belief in human rights and that uh, these discussions have to come from an understanding of not just uh, what affects the marginalised but what affects everybody and the impact it can have when people don't have housing and how that can disproportionately harm people who need social housing, I think we need to look at it from a policy level and particularly a human rights level as a holistic approach. So you'll see more work from me on that area and I very much look forward to your participation in that discussion because I know you guys are on the front line. I know you guys have the direct uh, knowledge and skills uh, and information that can help inform a better discussion on homelessness. As a society as rich as ours, with the opportunities that it provides for so many people, for some people to still be denied them simply because we don't have the arrangements, we don't allow the market or we don't allow governments to do everything it can do so that people can realise their full potential uh, is a very sad state of events indeed. I look forward to the proceedings of the next day and to hear your different contributions. Thank you very much.